Welcome back everybody to our exploration of system.txt.json or by its stage name, STJ. <laughs> That's correct. System.txt.json <laughs> gives you easy ways of serializing and deserializing or reading and writing yep. JSON yep. from the internet, from a file, from anywhere yep. basically. All right. So James, what happens? What happens if our JSON that we pull down, that we want to read into our application is missing some data a property that we absolutely need Ugh. in our app. We want something, and it's not there in the JSON. Ugh. OK, well, let's see what happens out of the box by default. Let's okay. hop over to my machine. So we have just a few lines of code. Here we have our weather forecast, date, temperature Celsius, summary, wind, all of our properties here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just reading this file. Or this could be a web request pulling down some JSON, and then I'm just going to deserialize it here. Now we can see here that this has date, temperature, summary, mm. Where's the wind? It's gone. Well, let's go ahead and run it. And let's go ahead and see what happens when I run this program CS file. Um, so when we go here to weather, note here, we zoom in, we see wind, zero. Zero. So it's just putting the default value. Just in. the default value. Yeah. That's it. So it doesn't know what to do. It's there, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But if our app is depending on it, mm. is wind or zero could mean something to it. So we want to make sure. You know, we want it to be there. We want it to be there. In case you probably want an exception to be thrown yeah. when this happens. So there's a few ways of doing this. The easiest way is just to make it a required property. Right. Um, and that's like, what, C sharp 11? C sharp 11, okay. yeah. Okay. So here, if you're using C sharp 11 or newer, I've done it 7 or newer and mm -hmm. default in there, you just required. That's it. I'm just going to run it. Just one little <laughs> cat loan. You might already have this, right? So right, yeah. That's see true. What happens. Yeah, it's an important field. Wind. So sure enough, boom. boom. Right there. Look at this. JSON deserialization for type weather forecast was missing required properties, including the following. Wind. Wind. You told me exactly what's there. It's wind, yeah, boom. Good. So or what's not there. What's not there. So that's really nice, you know, and you could handle that gracefully mm -hmm. inside of yeah. your application. Um, or, of course, you can go back to your boss and say, hey, yeah. you know, go tell. Give me some good data. Yeah, go tell Matt to update the data. Can't boom, do my boom. job. Correct. Now, that's also helpful, too, if, for example, they maybe um, you had specified wind, you know, and not wind speed for the deserialization yeah. options, right? So if it can't find and can't parse it, it's not going to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you may not be using, you know, C Sharp 11 for no. some reason. Yeah. So you might not have the required option. That's okay, Matt. Don't worry. Okay. You can just say JSON required as the attribute. We've seen JSON ignore. We've seen JSON property names. Mm -hmm. And you can also say JSON required. And you could add that to all of them, for yeah. example. So that's kind of nice. If you don't want to change your property, right? I mean, right. Well, I mean, sometimes maybe it doesn't make sense to have the wind be required all, all the time, but just from the JSON. I just want it from the JSON. Exactly. That's a great point, too. So you're kind of in control of do you want to change your data object, your mm -hmm. type, your property there, or do you just want to kind of add that attribute for the JSON deserialization? Yeah. yeah. So, and of course, the JSON deserializer and, and things like that will respect whatever you set. Right. So there we go. And we get the same exact wow. exception there. Love it. That's it. Love getting exceptions. Boom. Feel yeah. right at home when I'm writing code. <laughs> yeah. So we can go and we can we can go change this, right? So here's wind. So if I want to come back over here and I say, you know, I go into this here and I say wind and I say, you know, 10 now. So now <laughs> we'll go and run it to show you that it really is, is working. So we'll go back over to our, our file here and uh, JSON required. So now that it actually finds that wind inside of it, sure enough, it yep. parses. There's the 10. We're we are happy. Totally good to go. Cool. Boom. All right, there we go. Adding required fields. Required inside. fields. So to JSON, deserialization, reading is happy. Exactly. Boom. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little feature that I think is just a gem of goodness inside a system text JSON or STJ, as we like to call it, uh, over here uh, for all of your serialization, deserialization needs. Um, we have a bunch of videos right here on the .NET YouTube talking about all the great features in System Text JSON. So don't forget to like this video, jam that subscribe button, become part of the notification squad right here on YouTube. Get notified every single time we put out a video. And yeah, you know what you got to do? You got to jam that button and also ring that notification bell. Ding! <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm James. I'm Matt. Thanks for watching.